All right, David Harry here. Now in this video, I'm just going to do a little bit of a leisurely overview of Cubasis 3 running on a Mac Mini with an M1 CPU in it or M1 SOC. So obviously right now we can't actually put Cubasis 3 on any of these M1 Apple Silicon machines. Uh, what I've done here is to rip the file from the iPad and then install it just by ripping it and then reinstalling. You can't download it from the iOS store right now or the App Store. Hopefully that will change in the future. So right now, although we can't do this, I thought I would demonstrate it just so people could get a bit of an overview as to what this can do or what it can't do. Now, this particular video is going to be a bit of just a, an overview type thing, you know, no big deep diving and stuff. However, I will do the deep dive thing, you know, further down the line. Maybe the deep dive stuff should be really done once this is actually available for the Mac download as well as the iOS download. Because like I say right now, I've had to do that jiggery pokery where I've ripped the file off my iPad and then installed it onto the Mac mini. And I definitely will do a deep dive at some point because I've been using Cubase for about 30 years now. And I actually started off on the Atari with it. So I started off on the ST with the original Cubase. And in fact, I actually used the Forerunner to Cubase, which was, was it Pro 24, I think Pro 16 as well at, at one point. Anyways, I'm digressing like I always do. What I'm getting at here is I'm a massive Cubase fan. I have produced loads and loads of stuff on Cubase over the years. And obviously I use Cubasis on iOS, so I definitely will do more stuff about this in the future. Anyway, so just to get into this overview, just to start off with, like I've just said, I've basically ripped a bunch of IPA files off my iPad. There's just a few of them here. I've been trying out a couple of other synths as well, and everything seems to be working really well, to be honest. Obviously, there's, there's a couple of games in here as well, because I'm into like playing me games and all that. But as we can see, there's the Cubasis 3 IPA file. So basically, I ripped that from my iPad using iMazing and I then installed it onto my Mac here. Now, if anybody's interested in this process, let us know in the comments and I'll probably do a bit of a like walkthrough tutorial on how I went about doing it if anyone is interested in that stuff. Okay, so like I say, just a, a general overview here. Now, there's a few things to start off with which are negative and let me get those out the way. One is you can't really use keyboard commands. You can't even do basic transport control, as in I'm hitting my space bar there. It's not doing anything, you know, nudge keys, arrow keys and stuff like that. Any general transport functions that you would do on a keyboard, say in Cubase, whether that be on Mac or, you know, Windows, you can't do any of that stuff here. Uh, so that's a bit of a downside, I suppose. Although, you know, at this moment in time, it's not meant to do this anyway. This is, I hope, something that will be developed by Steinberg. Now, also as well, there's a, a few things to do with how the app scales as well. Uh, and this is in keeping with most iOS things that go in onto the Macs at the moment. They don't scale. So right now, that window we're seeing Cubasis sitting in is the biggest it will be. You know, I can't expand it and I can't grab the corners and, you know, move it about. And indeed, right now, we are watching the equivalent of a 720 size on the, on the screen. So although I'm in 4K, in fact, it'd be easier if I show you. If I go to displays here, if I actually go to the proper 4K, like, scale on the Mac, th that's how big Cubasis really is there. That's in, re that's in relation to uh, 4K, obviously, true 4K. Now, if I start scaling up here... Still, it's small, and then weirdly, that scale option there is basically the scaling equivalent of 1080. And as we can see, the app window is still really small. So, what I've had to do is go to this one, which is basically the scaling option, as it says there for 720, and that's in order to get it this size. Now, they're probably the only real negative things that I could say so far about this, and I'm not having a go at anything, and that's because it's not meant to do this anyway. I've done something here which you're not supposed to do, so I've got no right to like moan about anything, and I most certainly won't be. 
But hopefully, you know, Steinberg will get around to modifying the iOS version of Cubasis so that it does scale on Mac with M1 and stuff like that. You know, so it really is a lot to look forward to. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is just run through one of these demonstration tracks that comes with Cubasis. So let me play about 15, 20 seconds of this. And then I'm going to replay it again, but show you the system monitor, right? Because this is the first thing I think anyone who uses Cubasis is going to look at and go, wow. So let me just play this first. Okay, so anybody who's you know got Cubasis 3 will know what that demonstration track is there or that demonstration piece. Now, the thing with that, that's played perfectly well there and all the rest of it. Now, the other thing with this though, you don't really have a lot of MIDI per se going on. So, oh, if I just move something. <laughs> right, you don't really have a lot of MIDI stuff going on here. A lot of it is pre-rendered audio. However, it is using effects and stuff. But nonetheless, you know, even something like this would use a fair bit of power to run. But check this out now. I'm just going to play it from the start again. Look at the monitor in here as this plays through. Okay, yeah, so if you're looking at that there and thinking to yourself what I did, which is if they can do that with just such little resources being done or being used, how mad could you go with Cubasis on an M1 processor? That was my first thing. I'm going to look at that. Now, don't get me wrong. I use an iPad Pro 2020, and that is also like really powerful, um, but not as powerful as what this is, though. So these M1 chips, I'm just sitting there thinking this is going to be bizarre because I think um, I don't think we'll see higher complexity, like you know VST equivalents going in and stuff like that, because obviously you know Steinberg have got to make Cubasis uh, very lightweight in order for it to go backwards compatible with a lot of like you know older iOS devices so I don't think we're going to see more powerful things going into Cubasis because we've now got the M1 processor but we will definitely be able to do a ton more stuff with it it's honestly the mind boggles when you start looking at these numbers of what, what it's able to do with such limited or such small amounts of usage of like you know it's processing and stuff like that Anyway, I'll get past that point, otherwise I'll just get stuck on things here. Now, another thing is, obviously, because this is a touch interface app, you, there's a lot of issues here because, you know, you can't right-click with the mouse and stuff to pull up things and what have you. Everything is going to be down to, like, you know, particular clicking and stuff like that. I mean, we can get into everything. It's not a problem. So, you know, if you want to go analysing things on a track-by-track -track basis, we can do all that. And then if we have a look here, say, at uh, this MIDI information, so we can pull all that up and obviously we can get inside and we can manipulate all the MIDI events and things and stuff like that. I'm pretty much in the same way. We're going to be able to do all the same things with audio. You're going to have to give me, <laughs> you're going to have to forgive me what it is. I use PC mostly, not Mac, and I get the, I get all weirded out by the, uh, by the reverse of the scrolling on the mice and stuff like that. And I'm trying to do stuff here that I would normally do on a PC, and it's not going to work, <laughs> right? So yeah, as we come down here, say to some of the uh, the audio tracks and stuff, again, same thing. We can do whatever we're going to normally do. 
Now, I've only gone over it briefly, you know, myself before I've done this video, and there probably is a whole bunch of things that may not work correctly uh, due to it being mouse controlled. But so far, you know, there's a, there is a, you know, a fair bunch of things that are that are in there. So there's a quick fade there and stuff. Um, actually, now it'd be great just to be able to do like a a, key, a keyboard undo, as you can hear there. In fact, there's a beep. That's happening because of what I'm doing. Uh, with the keyboard so it's not responding to things off the keyboard and stuff but like I say anything here that we're used to doing where we would do a direct touch on the interface we could do that anyway with the mouse so like you see you just seen the the, the fade in there what well, now if I do that fade out not that you would do it at that point but that's just to give you an idea of what it will do and stuff okay sorry about that I was just interrupted with something <laughs> right so basically what we're seeing here then are pretty much all the functions are available with touches and stuff or clicks against touches and stuff like that like i say if this is ever going to work properly you know on mac and stuff then steinberg would have to completely like you know add a whole like key set to it and stuff like that although i don't think that that's going to be a terribly difficult thing to do I mean, let's just try some quick stuff here so if i split the track there yeah, so, we, you know, we do things like that, splitting and stuff. It's a little cumbersome because obviously we have to keep directing the mouse because we're on a single point or a single click option here. So no right click and no, no shortcuts and stuff for now. So, yeah, you know, we can basically do everything that we're used to doing. And then if we go into, say, the parts and stuff, let's see, let me go to some MIDI stuff. What it is, I've got a Samson um, Carbon 61 plugged into this. And this is obviously what I would use for my iPad because it's got the slot in the top to plug my iPad into. So if I click on the kit there, there we go. So all your MIDI stuff's going to be great. Um, I've already tried using it very, very briefly. It all works fine. Um, let's see where are the synths and stuff here um hold on i'm getting lost again <laughs> actually it'll be this thing that says pad won't it right so just quickly and then obviously you know we can pull up the keyboard on the screen as well and then we can obviously manipulate that in other ways the ways that you know in ways that we would normally be used to doing it and stuff as well um just basically pulling up and then changing the presets and stuff is easy enough so we can do all that stuff like i say this is just a very scatty overview to let people like see it initially so i can't really be demonstrating too much here or showing stuff out any in any great detail or at any great length uh, you know all these things like moving the transport locators and stuff you know it'd be good to have shortcuts for that off the keyboard and what have you or maybe mouse clicks and what have you but like i've just said before you know it's not even meant to do this right now this is not what steinberg have designed it for so i'm not criticizing anything when i do this so you know just bear that in mind i'm just basically saying kind of what it will and won't do I'm not having a go at it or anything like that and then on here setup and stuff you know we can get into all the stuff that we normally would do for the projects and that i mean certain things to do with say i don't know sample rate for instance that's going to be restricted by the computer itself as well in fact let me just try something here yeah, so we can't change sample right there, but I think that's going to be dictated to by the actual master clock for the sound card that's built into the Mac anyways. Uh, we can change bit depth and stuff, I would imagine. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then obviously everything else down here, we can start fooling around with that in exactly the same way as we would do on an iOS device or, you know, on an iPad or something like that. So for the best part, I would say everything works, right? So the bottom line is, everything seems to work as it should do it's just that we don't have the same kind of finesse and control as we would do if we were using say you know an ipad or even a phone to be honest and then obviously things like you know anything on here for the scaling of stuff like the faders on the ui for you know for the mixer and stuff all these things are fine in fact let me just go into a larger view here and then getting into like you know our insert options and all the rest of it we can do absolutely everything that we're used to doing so as far as i can see immediately there's nothing that's not working there may well be some stuff here that um 
I can't get access to that I've not looked at, which may require a, a, a different type of approach to get at it. And it may not be doable with a mouse just yet. And definitely can't with the keyboard because there's no keyboard commands. But again, I know I keep saying this and reiterating it, this is not meant to do this anyway. Okay, so yeah, I could wrap it on for all kinds of time of you doing this, um, but I'll leave it at this for now. But let me know in the comments uh, if there's anybody out there who uses Cubasis. Uh, this will happen for any version of Cubasis as well, not just three. If you'd like me to do you know, like some kind of tutorial on how I've gone about getting hold of the, um, the IPA installer to go into the Mac, I'll do something about that. Um, also as well, keep an eye on my channel, um, especially when you know a Cubasis 3 is officially supported for Mac OS on M1. Because at that point, I think I will start doing some very specific things to do with like, you know, using Cubasis, some tutorial -y stuff and things like that as well. Okay, so I think that's probably me run my course here. There really isn't anything else to go into because like I say, no deep dive and nothing like that, just some general overview stuff and let's get a bit of an idea as to will it work and the resounding response to that is yes it will work and go and buy what that cpu dsp meter was doing before as well i would say if if and when steinberg do this properly for you know for m1 and stuff q basis is gonna be insane now there is one thing here though that i've thought on about and that is will steinberg ever have Cubasis available for like you know the Mac M1 range and the reason why I say that is because Cubasis 3 is actually a really really very powerful door in its own right and for a lot of people they may not even need to go to Cubase because Cubasis may do everything for them and so maybe Steinberg may not have Cubasis available on M1. And the reason for that is, is because if Steinberg are wanting to sell Cubase for say $500, they're never gonna sell it to people who see this on a Mac for $50 and this might be all that they need. So like I said, there could be a conflict of interest here between Cubasis and Cubase to the point where Steinberg just may not have Cubasis available on M1. And if they don't, I could totally understand it because it, it definitely will stop people from upgrading to Cubase because there will be people on Mac who, who want Cubase and it's way more powerful than what they need but if they've seen Cubasis running, they'd be saying, well, I'll have Cubasis instead. So Steinberg could end up cutting into their own profits by putting Cubasis available for Mac M1. Not entirely sure. Or maybe Steinberg just look at this in a different way and they just go, we just want to popularize the platform full stop or popularize Cubase and Cubasis, you know, no matter what. Who knows anyway? There's me rambling on like a complete tool again. All right, anyways, I'm going to dive off now, but keep an eye on my channel and stuff. And if you found this video insightful or interesting, please give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing to my channel and if you subscribe to my channel you might want to click on that bell thing for whatever that's worth anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now